Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So in this video I am going to be doing a bookshelf tour which I've never done on my channel before. Not sure how this is going to go. <laughs> I did do a bookshelf reorganisation video last year when I moved in with my partner. So I kind of went through the bookshelves then but we've gained a lot of books since then. So I figured now would be a good time to finally film this video. I've been putting it off because I feel like it's going to take me a while. Just to give some background, me and my partner actually share bookshelves. So we have four big bookshelves here. Sorry if you can hear the squeakiness of the tripod, but we have four main bookshelves here. And then we also have another bookshelf behind the camera, which is mostly sci-fi. This is mostly fantasy and thrillers and then we also have another unit in the lounge which has my contemporary books and literary fiction and anything that's not a sci-fi thriller or fantasy. I think the way I'm going to film this is we're going to start in the top corner and then I'll go through each shelf and just talk about the books in general. I'm not going to talk about every single book but I'll pick out some that maybe have a special meaning to me or that are special editions and yeah. I guess we'll just go from there. My partner Sam is also going to be joining me for part of the video because some of these books, like I said, are his. But I thought it might be quite fun to talk through those anyway because a lot of his books are books that I am also interested in. So they're on my TBR, kind of. I think that's everything that I needed to say in this intro. So yeah, we're going to start in this corner and then work our way down. And then I'll quickly go through my partner's sci-fi shelf and then we'll move on into the living room at the end of the video. Hello. <laughs> so Sam is here with me. Would you like to say hi Sam? Hello YouTube. <laughs> So none of these books are actually Sam's, these are all mine. So this top left shelf is all fantasy. We have my Game of Thrones collection. I read like the first four books, I think it was, when the TV show was out. And then I kind of lost momentum for the series because, I mean, is Winds of Winter ever going to come out? <laughs> so I will go back to this possibly if Winds of Winter ever does get released. I also have the first two from Blood and Ash books by Jennifer L. Armentrout. And again, I started this series, I read the first three books, and then I kind of lost momentum <laughs> for the series. So I do plan on going back to it eventually, but I don't actually know when. <laughs> These are actually some of my favourite book covers. So The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow, I bought in Edinburgh earlier this year, and I really want to read it because I really enjoyed the Once and Future Witches by Alex C. E. Harrow. I read this, I think it was last year or the year before. No, I think it was last year <laughs> and really liked it. I really liked the historical elements and I really liked Alex C. E. Harrow's writing style. And then on the end of this shelf, I have a few V. Schwab books. So I read the Vicious, Vicious Villains duology and then I read the first book in the Dark Shade of Magic trilogy and I do plan again on continuing this series but it's been a while since I read book one so I want to reread that before I continue and I know the fourth book comes out this year so it is one that's kind of higher on my priority list but it's just finding the time. <laughs> so this next shelf is mostly my Sarah J Mass collection. I have the Throne of Glass box set which my mum got me for Christmas in 2020 I think it was. I read the first book and then haven't continued yet which I feel is going to be a pattern <laughs> with this video but yeah I do eventually want to finish this series because I really like the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. I have the original paperbacks here which I got from eBay because I really don't like the new paperbacks. I've got the paperback for A Court of Frost and Starlight because when I ordered these 
from eBay. That was just how they were bundled together. This next shelf is also a bit mismatched. <laughs> I should have said actually earlier in the video, but I don't separate my unread books from my read books. On this shelf, we have The Day for Bad Trilogy by S.A. Chakraborty, which is one of my favourite fantasy series. I also really love the covers for these, and I, w I really want them in hardback, but they are super expensive, so I know that's probably Probably never gonna happen. <laughs> and then yeah, like I said, the rest is a mixture of books that I have read and I haven't read. So Circe, I have read and didn't like. <laughs> and then Nettle and Bone is on my TBR. A Master of Jin is on my TBR. Kindred, I've read. Next up we have a very mismatched Stephen King shelf. So I read the Dark Tower series by Stephen King when I was a teenager. I can't remember exactly how old I was, but it took me years <laughs> to read this series series. So my mum got me, I think it was books four, five and six. Randomly, I think she found them in a charity shop and knew that I liked Stephen King so decided to pick them up for me. And then I realised that I needed to read the first three books first. The first Stephen King book that I actually read was Four Past Midnight, which is a collection of short stories. And I think the whole concept behind this is that they get progressively more scary. <laughs> so the first book, well, the first short story is meant to keep you up till one past midnight and then so on and so on until four past midnight. But yeah, this was the first book that I read by Stephen King and I really enjoyed it. Couldn't tell you anything about them now <laughs> because I read them like 20 years ago. But yeah, really enjoyed these and I'm glad that I found this when I cleared out my loft before I moved last year. These two I haven't read yet, but I do want to, especially 112263. I've heard a lot of people say that this is their favourite Stephen King book and that has me intrigued. We found this in a charity shop quite recently. And then we also have some books in the corner here, which I think I've mostly read. So we've got The Shining, Misery, Carrie, Salem's Lot, Pet Cemetery. All of those I have read. Oh, The Green Mile as well. I read that earlier this year. So this next shelf is double stacked, as you can see, something which Sam hates. I do hate, <laughs> I do hate, but unfortunately we He's ran missed. out of room yeah. and uh, yeah, it was a requirement. Yeah, so these are uh, mostly thrillers and horror. So we have a few Ruth Ware books, we have some Riley Sager, and then yeah, mostly just random yeah, it's a mish thrillers. Mash. Yeah, a bit of a mish mish mash. <laughs> and that's why it's one of the lower shelves because it's ugly. <laughs> It is ugly. <laughs> Moving along to this next shelf and we have more hardback fantasy. So this is a mix of adult and YA I think, but my favourite books on this shelf are the Illumicrate editions of Prior of the Orange Tree. So I read the first book. Oh, let's see if that'll, that'll focus. <laughs> so I love the stenciled edges on this, but I read the first book back in June, I think it was, and it has its flaws, but it's one of my favourite books that I've read this year. So when I saw that Illumicrate were reprinting their special editions, I spontaneously decided to order them, and I have no regrets. <laughs> Just realised that these are the wrong way around, so we'll sort that out. <laughs> Along this side we have a mix of random hardbacks and also books that I got through the Goldsborough subscription. So I have now cancelled my Goldsborough subscription because I've only read a few of the books that I've got through the subscription and I haven't liked most of them, which is a shame because the additions are really pretty, but if I'm not enjoying the books then there's no point in me paying that much for a subscription. I think this is the most recent book that I got from them, which is Ink Blood Sister Scribe by Emma Tours, and I do really like this naked hardback, so I am hoping to read it quite soon. So next up we have the Robin Hobb shelf, which we just realised was kind of out of order, so we've sorted that now. <laughs> but this is our Round the Owlings collection. We do also have the paperbacks for most of the books, but Sam has been gradually swapping them out 
for hardbacks. But yeah, I'm currently reading the series. Reading? I am on City of Dragons. Yeah, we are buddy reading it, yeah. except that you've already finished. Well, this. that's not my fault. <laughs> So, so I'm currently reading Sea of Dragons and then I'm reading Blood of Dragons next month. I think this next shelf is actually one of my favourite shelves in this room because it has a lot of my favourites apart from Hellbent which we're not going to talk about <laughs> but the Winnowing Flame trilogy is one of my favourite series. The Greenbone Saga by Fonda Lee is another of my favourite series and I love the stenciled edges on these. These were from a Luma crate the year before last. I think I got these when Jade Legacy came out in 2021. I think I treated myself for my birthday because they came out around Christmas. Okay, so I just filmed a clip for this shelf and then Sam realised that they're all out of order. So we're filming it again. But this is mostly Brandon Sanderson paperbacks. So we have some of his standalones and then also the Mistborn series, like Era 1 and Era 2. Then on the end, we have some ML Wong, The Sword of Kaigen and Blood Over Brighthaven, which are two of my favourite books that I've read so far this year. And then we also have Gideon the Ninth, <laughs> which was Sam's worst book of last year. Yeah, it was not my favourite. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think I gave it a two stars, which was my lowest rating of 2022, so yeah, um, yeah, absolutely was not for me. I think you're going to like it. I really want to read it because my friend Nat is reading this series at the moment, and the way that she's describing it, I feel like I could like it. Yeah, I think it's your type of humour. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to listen to the audiobook while I read it physically, because I've heard a lot of people say that that's one of the best ways to do it, so yeah, I am planning to read that, and I hope I love it so that I can prove you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but then along this other side of the shelf we have St. Patrick Rothfuss which I do need to read but it's another uncompleted series and I am trying not to start series that aren't completed. So this next shelf is mostly Sam's books so I haven't read any of these books. <laughs> I think this is mostly what a mix of fantasy and sci-fi. This is mostly fantasy um, so you've got the Cradle series which is a um, progression fantasy. I think I read these back to back. They're incredibly addictive. The only annoying thing is that <laughs> for whatever reason I bought the last book in a completely different format so I'm gonna have to buy the correct copy at some point. That's um, really annoying. It is really annoying. Um, we've got the Hugh Howie series, um, uh, the The Wool series, which is great. So that's just been adapted into an Apple TV show, which... Um, uh, have you watched that yet? No, I've only... I'm, I'm about to start it, to be fair, but... Um, Can you wait and watch it with me? Yeah, of course, <laughs> yeah, but it, the series is great. Then we've got the Ryria Revelation series, which was really good. It's probably got one of the... one of my favourite um, uh, comedy duos um, uh, uh, in, in, this, in any series that I've read. Um, again, the only issue is, for whatever reason, the third book you can see that it's completely stretched, so this line is below this one and it really annoys me. <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm going to try and find them in hardback at some point. I don't know how well these bottom two shelves are going to show up on camera because it's quite dark in that corner, but along here we also have YA fantasy and childhood favourites. So I have my Philip Pullman books, we have the Edge Chronicle series, which is a series that we both loved. Yeah. Yeah. When we were kids. <laughs> yeah. Which was crazy because our first date we couldn't stop talking about these because we both realised that we'd um we'd read them. Yeah, yeah, which I think is really cool. Yeah. And then I also have my um Aragon books. I don't actually know what Aragon. this series is called. Yeah, Aragon. Aragon. <laughs> Aragon? Yeah. Who are you? Because it's about a dragon. I've never heard anybody <laughs> pronounce it Aragon before. I don't know if I ever actually continued this series. I know I reread the first book over and over again. And then I must have read books two and three. I have memories of reading the fourth book, but I don't own it. So I possibly borrowed it from the library. But yeah, I know that he's actually bringing out another book in that series as well soon, which is is really really strange because I read these like 20 years ago. <laughs> so this shelf is more adult fantasy. We have mostly Sam's books again. <laughs> However, 
on this shelf, but there is a series that I've read that you haven't read. No, I know, I know. I, I should, and I know I should, but I haven't. I've read The Hobbit, and I wasn't the biggest fan, so... But apparently the tone of the uh, the actual trilogy is completely different yeah. to The Hobbit, so... I think even if you didn't like The Hobbit, you could still like Lord of the Rings. Yeah, 100%. Very... I, I will get to it at some point. Yeah. I yeah, I think we both of us have read um, these books. I was now. about to say, I have actually read other books yeah, on, uh, on this shelf, because I read The Rage of Dragons a few years ago, and I liked it, but I never, yeah, continued with book two. But I know it's, again, an, it's an incomplete series. You can tell we're getting into Sam's side of the room, because on this next shelf we have even more epic adult fantasy. So we have a few John Gwynn hardbacks, Joe Abercrombie, and then this series is The Empire of the wolf which i have heard good things about and really, i am interested in really good yeah the yeah. second book um uh, tyranny of the faith came out this year um earlier in the year and i absolutely loved it it's one of my favorite reads of the year which i didn't expect at all and it's a big big step up from the first book yeah um so um i can't wait that funnily enough though the first book that i got um uh, tyranny of the faith the um last four pages of the book weren't in it Oh, um, I that, yeah, yeah, they've been torn out. Really I hadn't realised. <laughs> so I was right at the end of the evening reading it, and uh, completely missed the ending. Four pages to go, and I had to go into Waterstones to pick up a another copy. Yeah, that's annoying. This next shelf, as you have probably gathered, is more epic adult high fantasy. <laughs> so I don't think I've read any of these. I do really want to read. The Stormlight Archive, but I'll probably read them on my Kindle. You listened to the audiobooks, didn't you? I listened to the audiobook of all of these, um, loved it. Um, I can't remember who the, the narrators were, but I think they're the same guys who did Wheel of Time, um, and they're, they're fantastic. I haven't got around to reading the first binding yet. I know that it um, uh, had inspiration from Name of the Wind, um, uh, so I really want to read that. And the Ember Blade series. I love um, the covers uh, of these. I yeah, the, the covers are absolutely gorgeous and the books themselves are absolutely brilliant as well. And then we've got the Lycanius trilogy in hardback, which took me a while to um, find just because the hardback copies are, are, are really rare. Um, uh, and then we've got the uh, the Will of the Many. I really want to read this. Yeah, it's it's really good. Um, again, with James Islington, the ending is fantastic. Like nearly all of his books I've read. Um, uh, so I can't wait for the second book. Hopefully next year. Yeah. And then we've got Brian Lee Durfee. Um, I've only read the first two books. Um, I wasn't entirely impressed but i've only got one more book to go so i'll probably finish it this next shelf is mostly adult fantasy paperbacks so in this corner we have the lies of loch lamora by scott lynch which is on my tbr <laughs> and then if we skim across to the opposite corner we have the broken earth trilogy by nk jemison which i read the first book in august and then my plan is to read books two and three in September. I really loved the first book and gave it five stars. So I have a feeling I'm going to really like this series as a whole, I hope. <laughs> and then we also have some more John Gwynn. So these are the paperbacks for The Faithful and the Fallen. I have read the first quartet and I still need to get round to the Of Blood and Bone trilogy. So I don't think we're going to spend too much time on these bottom two shelves because these are mostly books that I haven't read and which I possibly won't. I'm not sure whether The Dresden Files <laughs> is going to be for me. <laughs> I think we've talked about this. Yeah. It's urban fantasy but I don't think it's um, your kind of thing. No. I know that the audiobooks are narrated by James Masters and that's yeah. the only reason I would ever read them. And then the Powder Mage trilogy which I know you really liked but I don't think that would be my kind of thing. No but I, th I still think you should read Kings of the Wild. Um, yeah. That's I think you'll really like that that's really good fun. Yeah I almost read that actually a few months ago didn't yeah, I? Yeah I think you, I think you should. Yeah good. I've heard it's really funny. So the only book on this bottom shelf which I'm sort of interested in is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch because I've heard this is a really 
gripping sci-fi thriller and I do tend to like sci-fi thrillers I've read a few now and yeah I think I would like this I really want to try Blake Crouch's writing because I've generally heard good things about their books next up we have Sam's Wheel of Time collection so along this top shelf have you got all of the Wheel of Time books now no, in the original I'm, hardbacks I'm missing two I can't remember I think it's Fires of um, Fires of Heaven and Crossroads of Twilight I'm still missing in first edition because I want to try and get all of these in first edition except from the these two because they're way too expensive <laughs> in first edition and they're too difficult to get at some point maybe but yeah they're the only two I'm missing in first edition I don't think I'm ever going to read the Wheel of Time no I really don't think, I'm gonna read <laughs> the I, think it's, I think it's too long for an actual payoff and there are some books which were a slog and I think that's known in the Wheel of Time community that some books are a slog um, where not much actually happens um, and then obviously at the end of the series Brandon Sanderson took over from Robert Jordan um, uh, and finished it off. Yeah my dad's reading the series at the moment I think he's on book four or five and he said pretty much the same thing he said that Robert Jordan uses too many words to say something that could be said in fewer words I don't know where I was going with that. Next up we have Sam's Malazan collection so uh, do you want to talk through this because I don't even know where to start. Yeah, I think, I think it's um, uh, probably and universally agreed that it's the the best series of all time Correct? No. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, for me. It's, it's, it's probably my favourite yeah. series of all time. Um, I actually read these back to back with Wheel of Time, which was probably the Not worst the best thing idea. I could have done. Yeah. Um, uh, because I did burn out um, halfway through both of these series. But yeah, it's it's an incredible series. We've got the the first two books here, which are the subterranean press editions, these are the second runs of these books, um, second printings, but this is probably my favourite book in the whole collection. Um, it's pretty. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, signed by Stephen Erickson. Um, I think it's a, um, a copy, I think it's limited to 750 copies um, worldwide. Um, same with Dead House Gates. Um, I've just got a try and get the the rest of the, the books in that edition we've got the bce editions of the main series i'm only missing two dead house gates and um, the crippled god in this edition and then we've got the bantam press editions of um uh, these three as well as a couple of um tales from Bortune and corbel roach which are basically like short story collections. I was going to skip the next shelf because it's just more Malazan, oh, <laughs> but Malazan. Sam won't let me. Okay, so. <laughs> so this is a different author. Um, this is Ian Esselmont. So Ian Esselmont and Stephen Erickson wrote um, Malazan together. Um, I think it was based off a D&D campaign that they both did together when they were young and decided to create a whole series around it. So Ian Esselmont basically wrote a, um, novels of Malazan um, which are from characters which are on the periphery of the main series um, but he kind of um, uh, fleshes them out and creates tales which is absolutely fantastic and then there's a prequel series that he's done here um, which is set um, uh, years before the main series took place and then we've got Stephen Erickson's new series which is set as a sequel to the main series and then we've got <laughs> another prequel series which isn't finished yet there's only two books out third one to come which is set about a thousand or so years before the events of the first series so that is all of Malazan. Continuing on with another of Sam's favourite authors, we have the Robert McCammon shelf and then we also have some Justin Cronin on the end but I have actually read one of Robert McCammon's books. It's not on this shelf but I read Boy's Life earlier yeah. this year and I did actually quite like it. I think I berated you for <laughs> to try and give one of Robert McCammon books a, um, a go and you, you finally let in didn't you? Yeah and then I gave it four stars and not five stars and you were really offended. You know it happens. So yeah this is this is Robert McCammon. Um, uh, he's probably one of my favourite authors of all time apart from Stephen Erickson, which we've obviously <laughs> discussed. Um, the first book I read from his, which was on um, a shelf earlier in this video, was Swan Song. Um, it's a post-apocalyptic book, absolutely fantastic. Very similar 
to The Stand by Stephen King. These are um, some subterranean press editions from the Matthew Corbett series, which I've managed to find on eBay, um, which I absolutely love. So I think I'm two off completing the, um, the series. I've got River of Souls, which is between these two, and then I need to replace this hardback with Queen of, um, not this one, sorry, this one with the um, Queen of Bedlam um, subterranean press copy, but it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult to find. So over here we've got some books by Justin Cronin. Um, again, great author. I read these years ago, um, uh, I think back in 2017, 2018. Um, great series. Again, it's another post-apocalyptic series, which is one of my favourite um, favorite genres. Um, yeah, it's got vampires, it's got um, time jumps, it's, it's brilliant. And then on these final two shelves, there are a few books that I am interested in, a few series that I would like to start. So Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I know the Lightbringer has just come out and I've heard amazing things about this series in general. So as soon as I know that the last book is being published, and there's a release date, then I am going to start this series because I think I'm going to really like it. I also have The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet on my TBR by Becky Chambers. So I really want to try Becky Chambers' books because I've heard that they're really cosy and character driven and they sound like something that I'm going to really enjoy. Similar to Murderbot, I guess. I know that this isn't technically cosy sci fi, but I've heard really good things about this series and they're quite short. I think the first book is All Systems Red. And then I'm just gonna quickly pan through the final shelf. Not quickly. So... My favourite shelf. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's your favourite shelf. It's not my favourite shelf. <laughs> so this is, like I said, mostly sci-fi. There are a few books on here that I have read. So Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir is one of my favourite books of all time. I really liked The Martian by him as well. Haven't heard the best things about Artemis, so I'm probably going to skip that one, but I will read whatever Andy Weir publishes next because this was, yeah, one of my favourite books of last year. The City of Last Chances by Adrian Tchaikovsky is another book that I'm interested in because I got this through the Goldsboro subscription and it has the most beautiful edges. I haven't heard anyone really talking about this but I think it's a standalone and I am interested in trying some books by this author. I know that he has a few other books. I mean, he has quite a lot of books as well. You've got a few of them, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, they're all, they're all here. They're yeah. all here. Hopefully one day I will try some of his books, but um, we'll see when that happens. <laughs> so the books in this room aren't organised in any <laughs> particular order. I mostly wanted to make a rainbow, <laughs> but I have read most of the books in this room. There are a few that are still on my TBR, but because this is mostly non-fiction, contemporary fiction, literary fiction, and classics. Basically any genre that isn't sci-fi, fantasy, or thriller. I do tend to get to them a lot quicker. So yeah, that does bring me to the end of this video though. So thanks for watching if you made it this far. I have been filming for over two and a half hours. So I'm feeling very tired right now. And I realized I probably should have filmed the outro to this video when I was filming the intro but I didn't think ahead <laughs> so that's my bad <laughs> but hopefully you enjoyed watching this video let me know in the comments how you organize your bookshelves and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me but otherwise I will see you next time bye <laughs>